If 2023 had a theme, it would be affordable anamorphic. There's tons of companies out nowadays that have anamorphic glass, but this is the most interesting one that I've seen since. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the anamorphic adapter by Moment. Not only are you going to be able to get the anamorphic look, but it also has a unique ability to work on multiple lenses while only having to pay for it once. Let's talk about it. Now, to be honest, I don't think they should call this an anamorphic adapter. If anything, it's more so a lens. You're gonna have a front element at 82 millimeters and a rear element at 67 millimeters, so you can adapt it to a variety of different lenses. Now, I did get a test copy of this and I do have a couple of step-up rings, but you are going to get one that's gonna be a 77, 72, or an 82 as well, in order to adapt this into a multitude of different types of lenses. If you are stuck in a pinch, you could also use your own step-up rings in order to adapt this onto the front of your glass. Now for this review, I am gonna be testing this on the Sony FX30 and the Sony FX6, a super 35 sensor camera and one that's going to be full frame. Now the lens you're gonna put on the front of your camera is gonna be called your take lens. And there are gonna be some minimum requirements depending on your sensor size. On an APS-C type of camera like the Sony FX30, you can use 35 millimeters and above. And on the Sony FX6, you can use a minimum of 50 millimeters, which means that if you're a Sony FX3 user or someone that likes APS-C, you actually get a little bit more flexibility because you could use that one extra focal length. Now, setting this up is going to be fairly easy. You're gonna screw on the adapter to the front of your take lens, and you wanna make sure that your take lens is set to infinity focus. After that, you're going to use the one press button that's on the adapter itself and make sure the oval element inside of the adapter is going to line up vertically. This is not only going to help you with your squeeze factor, but it's also going to make sure that your footage doesn't look off and your flares also look the way that they're intended to. Now, a lot of other reviews and some recommendations would say that you want to use this only on vintage lenses, and that's because they're going to be manual focus and you're going to be able to find infinity focus a lot easier. However, I only have autofocusing lenses and you probably do as well, so you might want to find infinity focus by turning on the manual setting on your camera, setting up your infinity focus first, and then putting the lens adapter on second. Now, I don't own these and they're just rentals, but I did use the DZO Vespa Primes for this test as well in the 35, 50, and the 75 millimeter focal length. That's a way that I could actually use manual focusing lenses, put it on infinity focus, and I could actually get some test shots in there. Now, anamorphic lenses are gonna be three things. They're gonna be hard to find, really heavy, and incredibly expensive. Now, the moment anamorphic lens isn't the most expensive adapter in the world. However, they are really, really big. The anamorphic adapter does sit at 880 grams or just about two pounds. And when that's on the front of your lens, you're gonna have to have a pretty hefty rig in order to support all the things that are at the front of your camera. Now, with heavy rigs and heavy glass, you're gonna wanna look at lens support. Now, thankfully, these are pretty easy to find. You can pick one up by small rig on Amazon, and you could thread it through the 50 millimeter rods that are gonna be set up onto your rig of your camera. Also, keep in mind, when using the anamorphic adapter, you're not gonna be pulling focus or using autofocus on your take lens. You're gonna be pulling focus manually on the adapter itself. So make sure that you're staying on infinity focus or things are gonna look a little bit off. This is something that I had a little bit of a challenge with and I couldn't quite figure out, but after testing it a bunch, I did find out a groove in terms of using the anamorphic adapter on the front of my lenses. Now that we're all through that, let's talk about some of the image quality that's actually gonna come out of the adapter while sitting on top of your lens. Now you are gonna get a 1.33 times squeeze, and some people might not like that, but if you're someone that's just getting into anamorphic footage, this is perfectly fine to give you a wider field of view and that widescreen Hollywood look. Now when using something more subtle like 1.33 times, I'm able to keep a little bit more of the horizontal sides of my image, and at the same time, my editing programs do have preset settings for 1.33 times footage, and on top of that, my monitors could see it as well, so it makes it a lot easier to see my image while I'm actually working on set. Now the Moment Anamorphic Adapter doesn't just give you the widescreen field of view, but it also has its own unique characteristics to it. You are going to get some slight blooming into the highlights and it gives it a subtle lift that doesn't necessarily look like it's a Promise filter or anything like that, but it does take off those really sharp and crispy blacks that you might have out of your autofocusing lenses. In fact, when comparing this to my 50mm G Master to actually having the Anamorphic Adapter on, it does change the look a little bit outside of just giving it the dimensions and some of the look of an anamorphic lens. Now something I'm personally trying to get used to, especially because I haven't shot anamorphic a ton, is actually going to be some of the characteristic distortion that comes with using something of that nature. At first it was a little bit complicated and I felt a little bit weird using the anamorphics out of the adapter because I thought my images were just a little bit stretched even after doing de-squeezing. But the thing is that you're going to get some distortion out of the anamorphic adapter because that's a characteristic of the anamorphic look itself. Now you might be like me where you're spoiled with really sharp photography lenses that look absolutely perfect and have minimal distortion at all focal lengths. But while using the anamorphic adapter, once you've gotten used to the look a little bit, it actually looks quite pleasing and gives your look an 
identity that's a little bit different than using photography lenses. Now, this might be the main reason why anybody gets anamorphic lenses, and it's gonna be the flaring when you put a light source directly in front of your glass. Now, in terms of flaring, the anamorphic adapter doesn't disappoint. Not only does it give you some nice, subtle flaring, and in some cases, it does have it really pronounced, especially if that's a look that you're going for. But a thing that I really do like about the anamorphic adapter is that the lens flares are neutral and they're natural. When using other camera brands, you're either gonna get something that's overly orange or overly blue or just over the top in a color that's not from the light source that I originally intended it to be. While using the anamorphic adapter by moment, not only is it going to adopt the light source that I'm reflecting from, but you're gonna get nice and natural flaring that's gonna come out of the adapter when paired with my lenses. Now, depending on your take lens, you are gonna have certain characteristics that might differ, but when I put this on the DZO Vespid Primes, it did look really good in terms of the flares coming out of that lens. And in fact, when I used it on the G Master lens and I put my light source in front of the adapter itself, it still looked really good, whereas the G Master doesn't really have any sort of horizontal flaring. With the adapter, it's subtle, and at the same time, it's still neutral, so it doesn't look overbearing and off-putting when you're actually looking at your final footage. Now we're all a big fan of comparisons and I wanna compare an anamorphic adapter to a real anamorphic lens. And that's gonna be the Sure 35 millimeter T2.9 that I've reviewed on this channel already. Now when pairing both of these with the Sony FX30, there are gonna be some subtle differences to them where the Sure might be just a touch bit sharper and that's probably because I'm shooting at about 2.9, but the anamorphic adapter and the Sure anamorphic lens do actually look pretty similar to each other, which is actually surprising because the Sure lens, you're only getting one focal length and the anamorphic adapter is gonna work with a variety of different focal lengths, whether you're using vintage lenses or your auto-focusing ones. Now, in terms of the flaring, they're pretty much both around the same thing. There's not a gigantic difference between the flaring and the Sure Saturn anamorphic versus the anamorphic adapter. However, if you are using other lenses by Sure, you might find some different types of flaring, and they also might be more on the bluer side, which some people actually probably weren't the craziest about. Now, the Moment adapter is able to create an amazing image. However, there are a couple of quirks that you want to be aware of when you're picking this guy up. Number one, and we mentioned it before, is going to be the focal length differences between Super 35 and a full frame camera. Now, if you're somebody that's on a Super 35 camera like the Sony FX30, you actually are in luck because you're gonna get a little bit more flexibility in terms of your lens choices. This is something that I wish for in a version two where you could use the same focal lengths in Super 35 and in full frame. Now, at the 50 millimeter minimum on a full frame sensor, there was a couple of reviews that indicated that there is gonna be some vignetting even at the minimum focal length. Now, I did experience that as well, but there was one thing that I found after a couple of more tests that might actually solve this problem. Now, like I said before, I was using the DZO Vespid Primes for the majority of this test. And on the DZO Vespid Primes, they don't have a native mount to the Sony E-mount, which means I have to use an E to an EF adapter in order to get my glass on the front of my sensor. On top of that, I have to put the Moment adapter at the front of that lens while it's adapted onto my sensor in order to get everything working. And that's when I started to experience a little bit of vignetting, which you could fix by zooming in 1.2 or 1.3 times using the clear image zoom on your Sony FX6. But then something interesting happened when I used my 50 millimeter G Master lens. When I used that as my take lens and I put my anamorphic adapter on the front, I noticed that there wasn't actually any vignetting at all, which created a theory for me. If you are gonna be using lens adapter to get your glass onto the sensor of your camera, the distance of that adapter itself might actually interfere with the distance on the moment anamorphic adapter, which is gonna create more space and overall create more vignetting into the corners of your frame. This is the only thing that I could think of in terms of the reasoning why I had vignetting on the DZOs and not on my Sony G Master lens. So if you use something that's native to the mount on your sensor, you might not experience that vignetting. However, if you are using vintage glass or manual lenses, which does use adapters quite a bit, you might experience some vignetting, which you're just gonna have to use clear image zoom in order to get rid of it. On top of that, making sure that your alignment is perfectly in place to make sure that your footage doesn't look off is incredibly important. Even if it's a couple of degrees off, I did find that my footage looked a little bit overstretched and a little bit weird. Now that's gonna be me sinning through my own fault, but you wanna make sure that you have that accurate every single time. Now the theme of these quirks all have to do a lot with self-awareness and just knowing these things beforehand and none of them are a problem to you. But the last one is actually gonna be focusing on the adapter itself. You want to make sure that you're on infinity focus at all times while using the moment anamorphic adapter. If you're off a little bit in terms of your manual focus on your take lens, you're going to have a hard time dialing in your focus while using the moment anamorphic. On top of that, you want to be cognizant of the monitor that you're using as well. I found that when I was using my Atomos Ninja 5, even while using the 1.33 times preset on the monitor itself, dialing my focus was a little bit tougher. Even with the focus peaking on and making sure things were highlighted correctly, I did find that when I put the footage back into my computer, the focus was off by a little bit, which can be a 
little bit frustrating because we do rely on focus peaking quite a bit. Now, I'm not trying to start any wars here, but this is a win for the Hollyland Mars M1. It also has anamorphic support on it as well, and I found it a lot easier to dial in my focus. Now, the focus peaking system is a little bit different on that monitor, but I did find when I paired that with my Sony FX6 getting some of the full frame footage, it made it a lot easier for me to get my manual focus while using the anamorphic adapter. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't have the same monitors and you're maybe using a different camera, I did find that when using the focus peaking while it's actually in camera, even though there's a little bit of a stretch because there's no anamorphic support, using the peaking on there would seem to be a little bit more accurate. And sometimes even when you're using a monitor, you might want to still use things a little bit by eye just to make sure you're 100% accurate especially when you're working with two sets of glass that have their own focusing systems to them. Now, my boy over at the channel formerly known as Monkey Pixels wanted me to do a gimbal test to see if the anamorphic adapter could actually fit fully rigged on a gimbal. And I'm not going to do it. Mostly because I really do like my gimbal, albeit I don't use it a lot, but I don't want to risk breaking it. So if you want to go and do that and test that on your gimbal, you let me know in the comments down below and I'll give you a high five or something because it can be me. All in all, the anamorphic adapter by Moment actually changed a lot of the ways that we look at the anamorphic tools that are available now. It's not only a factor of picking up affordable anamorphic glass, but now you could actually pick up that adapter like the Moment anamorphic and adapt it to a multitude of different lenses while only have to pay for one piece of glass. That being said, that is a review of the 1.33 time squeeze anamorphic adapter by Moment. This is a really fun test and review to do, but I still want to get a couple of more shoots in with this before I give it back if I give it back. Special thanks to Moment for actually sending me this to review, get some footage on, and let me share my thoughts here on YouTube. And if you guys have any thoughts or you're interested in the anamorphic adapter, leave your questions down below, and hopefully I still have it so I can actually test it out for you guys and confirm some of your questions. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, or at the very least, you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.